Hello everybody, welcome to my channel again. And in to today's lecture, we are going to discuss about fundamental rights. These are very, very important uh, in our constitution. If you are an Indian, you must know your rights. All right. So in today's class, we are going to discuss the basic of it, all the basics. Uh, obviously, we will discuss uh, all the rights in our upcoming videos. But in today's lecture, I'm going to give you a briefing about it. All right. So stay tuned and listen whatever I'm saying. First question is why these rights are given. I mean, what is the point of these rights? So basically, benefit of fundamental rights are first, these are available against the arbitrary action of the state. And they are available against the action of private individuals that means let us suppose you are here in the middle so you have some right again uh, you have some right against the state and you can prevent yourself if state does something uh, of its are using its arbitrary power so you are here safe. Similarly, you have some right to save yourself from other private individuals. So these rights save you against the arbitrary action of the state and some action of other private individuals. So these right saves you. So you should know what are your rights. All right. So that, that is a benefit of fundamental rights. All right. So again, just read the definition again. These rights are available against the arbitrary action of the state. That means state can't do at its own something against you. You are very much safe because you have some fundamental rights. All right. Okay. So let's go further. Why, where these rights are mentioned? Obviously, in the constitution, these rights are mentioned. But where exactly these rights are mentioned? So if I talk about our fundamental rights, these are mentioned in part three of our constitution. And these are mentioned from article 12 to 35. Here I can give you one question. You have to answer in the comment box. That is how many parts do we have in our constitution? Like these are mentioned in part three, but how many parts are there in our constitution? All right, this, this is a question for you. And that you need to answer in the comment box. All right. So I have told you that these rights are mentioned in part three. And these are also described as Magna Carta. These are also described as, as Magna Carta. Now Magna Carta of India. Now what is Magna Carta? You There is a history for it. For Magna Carta. Magna Carta uh, is a symbol of liberty around the world. Basically, Magna Carta is very, very famous around the world. And what does it show? It shows liberty. That means it has some power. Magna Carta is nothing. It is, an, it is a document and there is a history behind it. And history of England. It was a year of uh, 1215. And that time there was a king called uh, John and who was very cruel. What he did Mm, I mean, he imprisoned his former wife and he murdered his nephew. So people used to believe that he's one of the worst king in the history. All right. And he used to impose, he used to impose many taxes. And if someone refuses to do so, he used to seize the property and he used to punish him in several ways. So he was doing his, uh, he was utilizing his arbitrary powers. All right. So people were very much uh, people were not feeling good under his uh, under his kingship. So what he did, uh, basically, what people did, uh, they come to he the, the people and the king they come together and they sign a document where uh, his arbitrary power was uh, was limited. They they come to a conclusion. Okay, now we shall limit the power of the uh, king. That means we have to decrease the power of the king so that he cannot uh, do 
whatever he wants rather he has to think of the other people as well all right so this is very very document if if i call some document as a magna carta that means it is an important document and this was signed in uh, 1215 all right so this was the, just the history of magna carta sometimes you get a question what is magna carta again coming back to the question like fundamental rights Uh, are also called as magna carta so what is magna carta magna carta is a is a important document uh, which was signed long time ago and there is a history behind it uh, all right so it it limits the power of the supreme person right king king was a supreme person king was the was above all so it limits uh, the power of the king all right so similarly Uh, similarly our fundamental rights limits the power of the state uh, right states these are these rights you have these rights if someone someone uh, does something wrong against you all right all right and what is the what is the best part of it i mean how we feel so secured because these rights are justiciable justiciable what is justiciable that means it is a duty of the court to protect these rights if these rights are violated you can directly go to court and you can file a writ five writs are available we will discuss in our upcoming videos what are these writs uh, what are these writs and uh, these are also called as constitutional remedy basically rem this is this is remedy against uh, i mean if if these rights are uh, violated then you can obviously go to the you can also obviously go to supreme court directly or you can also go to high court uh, so in general you can't approach supreme court directly but here if your rights are violated you can definitely go to court all right so uh, let's go further let's do some briefing of it so if i talk about the original constitution we had seven fundamental rights these were right to equality which are from article 14 to 18 second is right to freedom which are from article 19 to 22 then we had right to right against exploitation which is given from article 23 to 24 and then we have right to freedom of religion which is from article 25 to 28 then cultural and educational rights article 29 to 30 we also had right to property article 31 and right to constitutional remedies which i have already discussed writs we have writs if these are violated you can use this article 32 and you can approach supreme court directly okay so basically we had seven rights uh, in our original constitution but now one right has been uh, removed from our fundamental rights uh, it is the sixth one right to property right to property is no more fundamental right it is a legal right now right it is still a right but it is not a fundamental right it is a legal right all right uh, so basically what we can do uh, if uh, like sometimes government uh, government send a notice that we want to uh, occupy your property and you can't go to court because it is a fundamental right of course you can approach the court and you have to approach the court uh, but it is a legal right it is not your fundamental right so court will see all the uh, all, all court will see everything and it will come to some conclusion so you have to keep in mind this is very very important right to property is a legal right and not the fundamental right all right so uh, you fundamental right these are not permanent the parliament can obviously uh, curtail or repeal them but it will only it can only be done by constitutional amendment act and not by the ordinary act that means if it is written in the constitution it it doesn't mean it these are permanent obviously we can curtail it we can amend it 
our per, our parliament can amend it i mean uh, like we had seven rights earlier but now we have just six because we have removed a right to property which was in article 31 all right and this uh, this fund this uh, proper right to property uh, was amended in our 44th amendment act this this was deleted right to property was deleted in our 44th amendment act when uh, morarji desai was leading in 1978 my another question from all of you is what is mini constitution and uh, in under which amendment it came right in our previous video i have also discussed we have uh, seven major amendments and this is one of them you can watch my previous video and uh, learn something about it all right let's go further hmm so again we were discussing about our uh, property right so now it is a legal right it is in article 300 a in part 12 of the constitution and in the beginning of the video i asked you to write in the comment box how many part do we have in our constitution so this is part 12 where we can find this as a legal right and this fundamental right is in part 3 of the constitution all right uh, next point is some of the rights are available to only citizens and some of the rights are available to all right some if some foreigners are there some illegal my immigrants are there or some other persons are there it is available to all but some rights are exclusively available to citizens only for example some employment if there is an exam of uh, upsc all right so person has to be uh, an indian citizen in order to apply for the post so government obviously can make some rules where only citizen can have the privilege but uh, but some rights are available to all let us see freedom of movement if you want to worship so these are available to all all right and one more point is there that these rights are not absolute obviously state can impose some reasonable restrictions on them like uh, uh, during the time of pandemic uh, lockdown took place so you're not allowed to go out of the house right so government can obviously impose some reasonable restriction and you cannot approach to court and uh, one more example is there like freedom of speech uh, like you have the right to to speak uh, but you can't defame someone all right you can't defame someone defame someone means uh, you can't uh, abuse someone in publicly or you can't make a false false statement uh, against some famous personality like this person is that you have to have some proof for it if you do not have some proof then you are defaming someone all right okay um, before we discuss our next point about fundamental rights you should know the emergency in india who can declare the president can declare emergency and how many types are there three types of emergencies are there one is national emergency state emergency and financial emergency all right so three types of emergency are there but these fundamental rights again coming back to the topic these fundamental rights can be suspended during the national emergency except the rights guaranteed in 20 and 21 article so i have told you that we have fundamental rights how many from which article to which article i have already discussed this with, uh, with you in the big, in the middle of the video that um, from article 12 to article 32 so only article uh, 20 and 21 will not be suspended uh, during national emergency further uh, six rights which are given under right to freedom article 19 so uh, in, in in article 19 we have right to freedom where we have six rights all right 
so these can be suspended only when emergency is declared on the ground of war or external aggression and not on the ground of internal emergency right this you need to keep in mind for article 19 so three uh, points are there one is article 19 which can be suspended only which can be suspended only if uh, if emergency took place on the ground of external aggression and not on the internal emergency and article 20 and 21 cannot be suspended during national emergency rest or all, all uh, fundamental rights can be suspended you can't avail these rights now emergency provision are contained in part 18 my question in the beginning was how many parts are there in our constitution this emergency provision is in part 18 and this fundamental right is in part 3 all right all right so i hope you must have learned something in this video proud to be an indian and thank you for watching subscribe my channel hit the like button uh, hit the bell icon and also if you have any doubt just write in the comment box i will be happy to reply you i'll reply you as soon as possible i hope you must have learned something uh, from this video thank you so thank you so very much and see you in next video bye bye